When we think of the Jedi Council, we tend to think of its members as having been somewhat stodgy and traditionalist. That was certainly an accurate description of some of the Jedi Masters, such as our absolute least favourite, Serene, but it wasn't accurate for all of them by any stretch. The Jedi Master we'll be discussing today, in our last video in our series about some unknown Jedi Counselors, was anything but stodgy and traditionalist. She was creative, she wasn't afraid to act rashly when the situation demanded it, and she was a close friend of pirates. What's more, she's someone you're almost certainly familiar with, Adi Galea. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Galea was a Thalothian, though she and her parents were all born on Corellia. Her parents were galaxy-renowned diplomats, and Galea spent her early childhood traveling all over the Republic with them. Her parents' lives nearly ended in tragedy when suicidal assassins from the Red Laro terrorist group attacked a conference they were attending on Lanik. They were saved at the last minute by renowned Jedi Master Evan Peel. Shortly following this incident, Addy's parents gave her to Peel to be trained as a Jedi. Adi Galea showed promise early in her career as a Jedi, and she rose all the way to the rank of Jedi Master in a very short amount of time. She was strong in the Force and highly skilled with a lightsaber, being a master of Form 5 lightsaber combat. Galea was also an extremely skilled pilot, and was second only to fellow Jedi Master Saisi Tin before Anakin Skywalker showed up. She was most well known, however, for her skill as a negotiator. Much like her parents before her, Galea was a gifted diplomat with an intuitive grasp on Republic politics. Her skills as a diplomat and as a pilot ultimately led her to being given a seat on the Jedi Council around 44 years before the Battle of Yavin. In her time on the Council, Adi Galea was instrumental in strengthening the bond between the Jedi Order and the Republic, making inroads in the judicial forces and becoming close friends with then-Senator Finnis Valorum. When Valorum became Supreme Chancellor in 40 BBY, Galea served as his informal representative on the Jedi Council. She kept Valorum up to date on Jedi activities, giving him an advantage over his political enemies in the Senate, and through her, Valorum often went around the Senate to request help from the Jedi Council. In 32 BBY, it was through Adi Galea that Valorum requested that the Council send a pair of Jedi to Naboo to negotiate with the leaders of a Trade Federation blockade, inadvertently sending the whole Skywalker saga in motion. But Galea had friends beyond the Senate and the Judicial Forces. She wasn't afraid to talk with members of the galaxy's criminal underworld either, and maintained a sizable network of underworld contacts. With the help of her network, Galea was able to track down and eliminate slavers and terrorists all across the galaxy. She often carried out these missions alone, something that bothered some of her fellow Jedi counselors who saw Galea as a bit rash. But her network of underworld contacts became a crucial source of information for the Jedi Order, and so Galea's fellow masters ultimately overlooked it when she took the initiative without informing the Council. By 32 BBY, because of her underworld contacts, Galea was one of the first Jedi to notice that something dark was beginning to stir in the galaxy again. While the other members of the Council were willing to just brush off the tremors in the underworld as just criminals being criminals, Galea couldn't shake the hunch that there was something else behind a number of recent crises. In particular, she became suspicious of the Trade Federation. Her suspicions proved justified with the Battle of Naboo, which proved that the Sith had returned and were using the Trade Federation as a puppet. Galea continued to maintain her ties with the criminal underworld as the Separatist crisis began, allowing her to gain some insight into the nascent Separatist movement. This made her a logical choice when, shortly before the outbreak of the Clone Wars, she was chosen to make inroads with the pirate Captain Nim, the leader of the Lock Revenants. Nim, a large, burly Fearin, had served as a privateer against the Trade Federation during the blockade of Naboo, something that earned him a pardon for his previous crimes by the Republic. Though he continued living a life of piracy after the pardon, he was nonetheless considered an ally of the Republic and the Jedi Order. Ever since Naboo, Nim and the Locke Revenants had waged war against the Trade Federation as revenge for their attempted conquest of their homeworld, the planet Locke. As the Separatist Crisis came to a boil, it was becoming apparent to the Jedi that the Trade Federation was going to side with the Separatists, something that Galea's underworld contacts seemed to support. 
Glee determined that Nim would be an ideal ally for the Republic if war were to break out with the Separatists, as he was already experienced with fighting the Trade Federation. Hoping to recruit them, she set out to meet with Nim and his crew above Maramir. At Maramir, Glia helped the Lock Revenants defeat a Trade Federation fleet, and Nim accepted her offer of alliance. Over the course of the next few weeks, the Jedi Master essentially became an honorary member of the Lock Revenants, helping them and the Mir Resistance lay waste to Trade Federation outposts. As their campaign continued, they came up against Starfighter Ace Kavik Toth, the leader of the mercenary group Sabaoth Squadron. These highly effective pilots posed a grave threat to Nim's campaign against the Trade Federation, but with Adi Galea's help, the pirates were ultimately able to resist Sabaoth Squadron's attacks. Sabaoth Squadron, as Galea eventually discovered, was in league with the Separatists. Indeed, Kavik Toth had become the overseer of a Separatist bioweapons facility, which was producing the deadly compound Trihexalon. Galea and Nim worked together to destroy this facility before Toth could begin to mass produce the deadly bioweapon. Following this battle, Trade Federation forces largely withdrew from Locke to join the CIS droid army at Geonosis, allowing the Locke Revenants to finally take back their homeworld after 10 years of hard fighting. But Galea's adventures with the pirates weren't quite over. Nim intercepted a transmission revealing that Sabaoth Squadron was headed to Genosis to link up with other Separatist units, following which the Jedi Council learned that the Separatists were amassing a huge droid army on Genosis. Galea and her pirate friends headed to Genosis to join a team of Jedi sent to put a stop to Separatist activities there. Opting to stay in space to await the arrival of Kavik Toth and the Separatist naval forces. As the first battle of the Clone Wars broke out on the planet below, Adi Galea and the Locke Revenants fought alongside the Republic's space forces against Trade Federation battleships and Sabaoth Squadron, which was wiped out in the battle. Following the Battle of Genosis, Galea parted ways with Nim as she had been summoned to serve as a general in the Grand Army of the Republic. But she kept close contact with the pirates, who went on to serve as privateers fighting for the Republic. Galea, meanwhile, was transferred to the front lines of the war and went on to fight in battles on Agomar, Seleucami, and Lola Seyu. She put her skills as a fighter pilot to great use during the war, though she participated in many ground battles as well, often working aside the 91st Reconnaissance Corps. Galea also kept up contact with Nim and his pirates during the war, assisting them in their campaigns against the Separatist Aligned Trade Federation. She was known to go on long missions with the Locke Revenants, such that Obi-Wan Kenobi once joked that it was all but impossible to pull her away from her pirate friends. Her alliance with Nim was quite useful for the Republic, however, and so her long missions away from the front lines were presumably tolerated. The Jedi Master also battled other pirate bands during the war, including both Separatist allies and unaligned groups. Ironically, it was on an infamous pirate world that Galea ultimately met her end. 20 years before the Battle of Yavin, she was assigned to help Master Kenobi track down Maul and Savage Press, and their trail ultimately led to Florum. There, the Zabrak brothers had usurped partial control of the Onaka gang, sparking a brief pirate civil war on the planet. Kenobi and Galea intervened in the fighting and engaged in a duel with Maul and Opress, but the brothers were able, initially, to overwhelm the two Jedi. Opress ended up murdering Galea, and though Kenobi was eventually successful in driving the brothers off Florum, her loss was nonetheless a serious blow to the Jedi Order. Adi Galea was replaced on the council by Stas Ali, a fellow Thlothian. So that's our look at Adi Galea, the Jedi diplomat and friend of pirates who you might remember from Star Wars The Clone Wars. But what do you think? Did you guys enjoy this series? Are there any other Jedi Masters you'd like us to see talk about in this way? Let us know all that and more in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.